Welcome back everybody. This week, we're gonna jump right into the Parker Duofold with Big Red Finish. So inside the outer box, we have a nice heather gray inner box and on the spine, um, the other spine, and flipping it around, we have the Royal Charter for Pen Manufacture. Opening the inner box reveals the Centennial in Big Red. The first thing that stands out is how different this color looks depending on the angle of the camera to the lights, but we'll come back to that later. Under the pen, we have the standard care and use guide, as well as a Parker long cartridge. Now, we've seen these before, so I think I'm gonna fight my urge to look through this one. So skipping ahead, let's take a closer look at this pen, this time from overhead. And from this angle, this is where the big red starts looking rather orange. But on the finial, we have the first aesthetic choice that I think really makes me like this pen. Stamped into the palladium is the spade motif. It makes another appearance later on on the nib. We also have the Parker arrow clip, and to round out the cap, we've got Parker stamped into the palladium band. I also like the feel of the body. The precious resin sort of has a soft ebonite feel to it. But uncapping this pen, we get to what I think is the real star of the show, and that is this stunningly beautiful 18K two-tone medium nib with the spade motif. It really ties this colorway, especially with the black section separating the body from the nib. And the last little bit here of the overview is the filling system. Here is that converter we touched on in the beginning. It holds a fairly standard amount of ink, and in this case, it's holding Pilot Blue. But let's go ahead and get everything put back together and take a look at the writing performance of this pen. Now, there are a few things that stick out to me when I'm writing with the Centennial. The first is that this pen is very nicely balanced. To me, this means that the body of the pen is resting comfortably in the knuckle crease, of my index finger without the pen feeling like I'm dragging a lead weight across the page. The second is that the Centennial is a good length for not being forced into using it posted. As for the nib, there is all upside on this one. The medium nib finds that nice sweet spot for me where it actually looks like a medium and doesn't start looking like a broad. I also find that the flow that this pen is providing is superb. Not to mention that this nib is super smooth here on Rhodia. Out of the box, I didn't notice any hard starts or catching on the page, which should be something all brands at this price point should be able to pull off. That also goes for upside down writing. Both sides of this nib have a great feel to it, meaning that I can get two very different looks from this nib and have a good time. That's really important because I will sometimes find myself in a situation where I only have one pen, but need to restrict the line width to help make up for the shortcomings of the paper that's being used. As a side note, I think Pilot Blue is actually growing on me, and in some weird way, I actually like how it complements the body color of this pen. Also, even though I filmed the writing sample on Tomoe River as well, I think we're gonna forego that this time as the performance is spot on the same, meaning the performance is flat out amazing. So let's see if I can sum up my thoughts without coming off like a shill. I honestly feel that this pen is all upside. I really do. Now, viewers of this channel know that I'm not a fan of orange, but this orange is dynamic. It goes from what we see here on the screen to some nice red overtones based on the angle. And the size of the pen is very nice. It's pretty much the equivalent of the Pelican M1000 line, but with a more appropriately sized section. The texture of the body also has a very comfortable feel to it, and I like the addition of the dual fold engraving into the body. It helps tie that classic look to the pen. Now, sure, this pen could have been a piston filler, but in this case, I'm actually fine with the cartridge converter system that's being used. And finally, the price. Depending on where you buy it, you can actually pick up the Centennial brand new anywhere between $250 and $550. Honestly, I think right in the middle of those two is a good price, especially with this nib. So if you have the money and you want to pick up a really well thought out pen with an amazing nib, then yeah, give this one a go. But that's it for this video. Ink up that subscribe button, become a patron for early releases and extras, follow the channel on Twitter and Instagram, and remember, don't drink the ink.